Hi, my name is uh, Chris Miller and I came from New Zealand and I'm using a propeller ship and a little sailboat that I'm using for hobby stuff, testing stuff, instrumentation, and also my line of work. Now, one of the first questions I get is why do you name a boat Spin? I, it turns out that I've had a number of boats over the years, and I've always named them after the computer programming language which is a sort of techie term. I sailed to New Zealand on a yacht called C++. I've got a, got a powerboat named Java. I've got a dinghy called Risk, which is appropriate because I capsized it. And uh, this little boat I decided to name Spin, and it also works out very well for an acronym because it is a science project. Now, right now, it's, uh, I'm using the propeller ship to control all the servos and do the joystick control. It's not yet autonomous, but that's a long-term goal for it. Here's just some basic specs for it. Uh, one of the cool things about it is that it actually can generate its own power hydroelectrically. So when it's sailing along, I've got a trolling motor that's charging the batteries. And this is probably the only application of an autonomous or potentially autonomous vehicle which can be self-sustaining, you know, energy harvesting. So you can take it out and if it's smart enough and reliable enough, in theory, it should be able to sail almost indefinitely. Now, I work at Team New Zealand, which is a uh, sports team, and they race for the America's Cup. And there's a little background on the America's Cup. It's actually the, it's the oldest trophy in sport right now. It's over 150 years old. They, they race about every three to five years. Actually, Parallax propeller ships have been running on both Team New Zealand and Oracle's yachts last February, which is a the thing for doing uh, load sensing and sounding alarms when other teams are racing their boats and they didn't want to bring it. This is the type of yacht that Team New Zealand typically races. They're about 90 feet long, weigh 26 tons. This is Team New Zealand in 2007 when things were running smoothly. This is Team New Zealand 2009. They've sacked most of the team. There's only about four or five people <laughs> working. And I'm still on the team. I'm actually a designer on the team. And I want to keep moving forward with the instrumentation and stuff that I've been working on for over uh, nine years. And the only way I can do that is to have a boat that I can do everything myself. You know, fund it, sail it, work on it. I chose a little uh, four meter long hull that was used in a disabled sailors program. And actually, that class of boat they use in the Paralympics for sailing. And the key for this thing is that it has to be easy for me to use, easy for me to work on, and also be sort of realistic. It's not like a little toy RC boat. It's actually a boat that I can get into and sail on my own. And this is a shot taken on my very first test sail. I actually was caught smiling for a couple of minutes, and I wasn't yeah. worried about either having a the servos lock up or catch fire. And here I'm out uh, sailing around on the, on the Haraki. This little boat I can launch by myself with a motorized trolley to take it up and down from the pontoon and gangways. But I'm actually smiling. And this is for, for a project that I worked on for, for eight months and took it out sailing for the first time and actually everything worked perfectly. Oh, so that's, that's cool. Well, the cool thing about this, another cool thing about this is it's just actually very easy to do onshore testing. I can hoist the sails, move it around with the trolley. So I did a lot of testing, make sure the servos worked, the lines didn't jam, that kind of stuff. I needed a boat to do instrumentation testing, but I also decided to take it one step further to make all the lines, or basically all the controls robotic or mechatronic, with a sort of a long-term goal of making it autonomous. This circuit boards that I've been using for control is actually my really only my second microcontroller project, and it's really working out beautifully. I have uh, six propeller chips on board right now, doing a lot of different things, navigation, motor control. And eventually, I want to be able to get this boat smart enough that it can go off and sail just as well as an Olympic sailor can. Right now, the boat has a little 600-watt trolling motor on it, and I'm generating enough energy to be self-sufficient about 80% of the time. That was on the very first implementation without any fine-tuning to my regenerative motor controller. I'm also using it for instrumentation. I've been working on the America's Cup yachts, and the sailors are very conservative about the systems they want running on board. They like stock commercial systems, but those systems are actually quite limited. And I want to keep on pushing the envelope in better instrumentation, and this little boat allows me to do that because I have complete control over where I put sensors and 
load it up and I'll give you a little overview on this. You can see a close-up of the uh, joysticks controls that I have. I control rudder and trim and motors all from that. I have about nine motors on board right now. One thing that I'm doing differently from America's Cup Yachts is I have, instead of one speedo, which is measuring water speed as the boat's going through, I actually have four of them on board, which is a science experiment that I've always wanted to try that they wouldn't let me do with America's Cup Yachts. And uh, three wind wands, two GPSs. What are you trying to accomplish with four speedos? Um, right now, most yachts just have one little paddle wheel, and that gives you a scalar for a velocity. I have two paddle wheels on both sides of the boat, which instead of a single scalar gives me two vectors, and those vectors will be a little bit different between the windward and leeward side of the boat. And I'm hoping that the difference between those vectors will give me an unmeasured quantity that's very important for understanding the wind direction called leeway. It's sort of the yaw, the yaw on a plane. But leeway is something that there's no good system to measure it right now. Um, I haven't solved it yet, but I'm thinking that's a good shot at it. So here's my components that I have. I've got six props. And when you look at all the other commercial boards that I have for the motor controllers and some of the current sensors, I got there's 14 other picks on board. So the, actually, that boat has 20 microcontrollers on it. Um, eventually, I'm going to eliminate all the commercial boards and just do everything with props because when I look at what's going on with those commercial boards, I can do it better and cheaper myself and put it all in a single component. Got 64 channels of 12-bit A to D. I'm also for high-level stuff and doing some image processing that I'll talk about a little bit later. I have a little uh, single board computer running an Intel Atom chip, draws about four watts. So I have eight gear motors, some bunch of linear actuators, a bunch of current sensors, two GPSs. I have to say that I don't think I would have started off this project without a good microcontroller. And it is the prop chip that really, as, for a guy that's a software engineer and a hardware guy, and really my first four into microcontrollers, just blew me away and said, yes, I can do this project with a prop ship. And I didn't see that with anything I'd seen before. This is my very first uh, printed circuit board, but it was uh, pretty easy to do, and that actually it worked right, on the, right off the, from Express PCB on the very first time. Um, sort of updating my skills a little bit, so I'm doing some surface mount. Here's a power distribution panel, just to give you an idea of how much current can be put through the whole system. I can't think of another 12-foot dinghy that has that kind of electronics. <laughs> One of the advantages of this little boat is the trolling motor, so I can actually go out and cruise electrically and, and that charge the batteries. And cruising is pretty economical. I can go three knots on, on 50 watts of power. Um, with a hull like this, I can put in 150 watts and I'll be going about three and a half knots. So you're trying to find an optimal power output. To, I've got a battery bank that goes way down into the keel of the boat, the low center of gravity. I also can turn on and turn off stuff that's not being used when I'm sailing, because really the, the motors and the motor controllers themselves are only necessary when I'm tacking or driving. And once the boat's tack or drive, you can just shut all that stuff down. So it's steady state draw is about four watts. In the cockpit, the battery bank is basically on the floor, and keeping, getting this thing waterproof has been a real challenge because I've got steel lead acid batteries going along here, and then they also go vertically down to the bottom of the keel. And when you're sailing in this little boat, it has a big cockpit, and you're heeled over 30 degrees, it's like a bucket on its side. It'll fill up very, very quickly, probably you know, five gallons a second if you're really leaned over. So this whole cockpit would be filled with seawater at times. And it's really important to keep that from getting down into the battery component. Here you can see where I've mounted the, the winches in the cockpit, which keeps the rest of the cockpit open so I can put either myself or bigger payloads when it's out sailing. Because this boat is so big and heavy, I wouldn't be able to physically pull it by myself going up and down ramps. So I had to take this trolley that it's on and put in some big gear motors and a motor controller so I can get up and down. Now, the project still has a long ways to go, and eventually I want to make it autonomous. But right now, it's working out for me that I got a boat that I can take out sailing, experiment with instrumentation on, and it's taught me a lot of the circuit design and getting stuff done. I mean, the, the whole spectrum of boat building is involved, everything from painting to buying the boat to doing the rigging. And that's uh, my presentation. Very nice.